Hi folks, we recently published a video on rough grouse hunting in Michigan. Our host was uh, pro guide and pro dog trainer Tracy Liskey, and we also had Al Stewart, and he's an upland bird specialist with the DNR Michigan, and Al gave us uh, a lot of tips on grouse habitat, more than we could put into that episode. So we've done a separate little video here just of Al's tips on grouse habitat and what to look for. Enjoy. So here's a good place to look for grouse and woodcock sometimes. We've, we've got uh, you know, some, some shrubbery here that has uh, fruit on it. We've got an old apple tree. So in the afternoons, this is a good place to come and look uh, for grouse. And, We'll come back to this later on today, but uh, and you can see that there were some apples on it and you know, they've been on, on the ground here now, but uh, we'll, we'll come back and, and look at, at spots like this to see what we can find. So in this area, we have a small opening and we're surrounded by young aspen, young forest, and working with partners, we've been able to plant um, fruit bearing shrubs like hawthorns and crab apples. And we've done that in partnership with the Rough Grouse Society, the American Woodcock Society, uh, and a number of other conservation groups here in Michigan. Michigan United Conservation Clubs has actually helped to organize uh, group outings where people come and help us plant these, these shrubs. And here's an example of one. You can see, you can see the, the fruit right here. And uh, grouse and other songbirds really like to come into this and, and feed on these. And actually, they're, you know, these, these are just young shrubs, but you can see the fruit here, and you can see where there was additional fruit earlier, and the birds have come in and started to feed on these. So uh, this is an example of the partnerships that we have when we do work for rough grouse and American woodcock and wildlife here in Michigan. So, yep. This one's bearing a lot of fruit, Sergeant Crab. Yeah, this is Sergeant Crab. You can, you can see the fruits that have just come in on this, this young plant that was... Uh, just planted in the last year or so. And uh, you know, that, that, that partners up with the hawthorns that we have. And most people know the hawthorns by the, you know, the, the long thorn that's, that's on them. And uh, you know, again, grouse like the, the fruits from this. Other songbirds like to eat these fruits as well. So we're, we're real fortunate here in Michigan to have all the volunteer help and have everybody you know, that, that come to these gem sites or other areas where we're doing work for rough grouse to help us as a community to create habitat for these species. So this opening that's created here as part of the uh, timber harvesting operation that we have for Aspen in this area has, it has produced a really great opening for in the spring, woodcock will come into here and sing right on this very site and display. And then the females will nest within a quarter mile of this location. And so it's all part of the components that we look at when we're trying to manage for grouse and woodcock. And having singing ground sites for woodcock is really important. And this is an example of one of those areas. So here's some uh, brambles or uh, wild raspberries. You can see here's some dried up fruit. Earlier in the season, you know, in September, this would be a, a great place to uh, look for rough grouse. They come in and feed around in these and that fruit is just fresh. And uh, I like to hunt along these edges where you find this, uh, you know, in September, early October. All right, so th this is a, a good place to find rough grouse. We've got some conifers behind us. We've got uh, some red maple here that have been cut. We've got the aspen off to the side. We're coming down into the lower edge uh, where there's a wetland, uh, brushy area, some tag alders. And uh, that's a nice combination, a nice mix uh, where you might expect to find rough grouse. When you look at the aspen that's out here, you can see that it's about six years old, probably cut in 2011. And it's, it's really ideal for, for uh, woodcock right now. And it'll be coming into its own for rough grouse uh, within the next few years. This is some wintergreen that you find in, in the forest, particularly around aspen stands. And uh, 
grouse really like like eating these. Uh, last week I shot some birds that had a full crop of these wintergreen fruits. Actually, you can pick them and eat them yourself, and they have a wintergreen flavor. Uh, when when uh, th this year, some of the mass crops or some of the fruit crops on on the shrubs, uh, because of some late season frost, uh, have not been as strong as what we've seen in past years. So in a year like this, you find grouse eating um, the wintergreen fruits, or you'll find them eating beech nuts. We had uh, some good beech nut crop this year, and uh, then acorns. Uh, acorns were a little bit spotty, but uh, uh, a number of birds have been you know, had their crops uh, with, with acorns in that. In addition to it, you know, right now, again, we're in the early part of November, and as you look around, there's still trees with the green leaves on them. And uh, so the, the grouse uh, for the first part of the season had actually been eating some of the clovers and uh, on the ground, some of the green aspen leaves. And uh, now that's changing a little bit, but a, a bird uh, shot the other day had uh, aspen leaves, green aspen leaves in it uh, where the frost hadn't hit those trees yet. So we're looking for food right now. We're looking for places that, uh, uh, you know, a grouse might be. I, I try to think about it. Uh, if I would have, was a grouse, what would I be doing right now? And uh, we're looking, trying to look in some of those places as we walk through the forest right, right today and right this minute. So we're, we're hunting at, at a kind of the in-between period. The, uh, a large part of the woodcock migration has gone through all oh, the last week in October, uh, early October. And uh, we're in the first week in, in November. Actually, the woodcock season is over right now. But uh, I expected to find a few woodcock as we walk through these alder stands. You know, we've, we've had birds that... Uh, when we've had satellite transmitters on birds or other transmitters on birds, we've seen birds come from the Arctic Peninsula uh, down into this area the, you know, the, the 11th, the 14th of October of November, the 11th or 14th of November. So we could expect to find some woodcock here. Uh, again, the, the woodcock season is closed right now, but uh, you know, this is where we would, would find them. About a week ago, two weeks ago, there were a lot of woodcock around. And in fact, we were having 30 and 40 uh, woodcock flushes in just several hours. So, uh, you know, we're, we're in that in-between period right now between when, you know, the, the majority of woodcock have migrated through and then uh, we're looking for some rough grouse. So this is the time when they're, you know, really uh, hiding well using some other thicker cover. Uh, and and uh, so we're working on the edge of some of that thicker cover right now in anticipating of finding some birds. This is a hazel shrub and uh, grouse like the uh, seeds off of these. You can see the seed heads here. And uh, I don't know if there's, yeah, these are empty right now, but this is a, hazel's a good place to look for, for grouse. So there's a tree, little shrub there, shrub here shrub here behind us uh, and these are some preferred foods for uh, rough grouse and you can see the little flower heads here that are kind of yellowish this time of year and uh, sometimes there's a little stringy uh, yellow sulfur colored um, flower that uh, is part of this and uh, so it's, they're real visible and grouse like them so uh, we're in a good spot there's grouse food here So this is autumn olive. It's a non-native invasive species that, as you can see by even looking through this woods where it's actually invading the forest. But as far as grouse hunting goes, these fruits right here are highly preferred by rough grouse. In fact, we call it uh, grouse cocaine. They, if you have fruits like this, they just come in and just really gobble them up. And so, we're hoping here at the end of the day to be able to find some birds in this autumn olive 
uh, and in here trying to eat some fruits at the en end of the day, uh, just before sunset. So this is uh, gray stem dogwood or panicle dogwood. Uh, it's really high in protein, and uh, if you can find this kind of food source, uh, you're going to find rough grouse. And it grows in a little bit wetter areas, but I, I focus in on this whenever I can. And if a lot of the birds that I shoot are just chuck full, their crops are just chuck full of uh, this gray stem dogwood. It's a, a, a great plant for rough grouse. This is just a, a, a great spot for grouse on a cold, windy, rainy day. We've got gray stem dogwood with some fruits there. We've got some tag alders here. We've got some autumn olive, little red osier dogwood, and then all intermixed with some young oak, some mature oaks with acorns, and then lots of aspen all around us. So uh, this is a great place. This is just outstanding for, for grouse. And uh, on a better day, uh, I think we'd be into them right here. It was, it was a lucky shot, but uh, it will take luck any day. <laughs> Good one, dog. one shot, one kill. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. So, so this is, uh, you can look at it here. You can see the, the band on the tail. You know, the black band that goes across, it's interrupted there on the central two tail feathers. Now, that could tell you that it's a male or a female, but we move up here on the upper tail coverts and we see one dot. If there were two dots, then we would know that it was a male. Uh, it only has one, so it's a female. I like to remember that part by saying, if it's two dots, a, a, a male has two testicles, and if it had two dots, then it's a male. And this only has one, so it's a female. So. You know, it's a nice bird. We're, we're, we're just excited to be here and, and uh, been able to connect today uh, uh, with, with the, actually the, oh, the, the one bird that we had uh, pointed and flushed today. So uh, uh, one for one. That's, that's a nice way to start the morning. <laughs> every, every, bird, every wild bird like this is a trophy. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food and brought to you in part by RST Shot Shells, Mud River Dog Products, Peat Shoe Dryer, Wooden Stream Outdoor Footwear, Canine Active, and Merkel Shotguns.